Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Retired Vet Show. The FBI was given the use of deadly force during the Mar-a-Lago raid. And how do we know that? Because Judge uh, Eileen Cannon has unsealed the documents in the January 6th case. and She's finding some very disturbing uh, uh, things that have been going on with not only the Department of Justice, but the FBI, as well as Jack Smith. Uh, the the uh, evidence that came out prior to this was that the FBI had manipulated the, the, the documents that was strewn all over the, the news channels for weeks on end that President Trump was not did not have these documents secured in a secure facility. They were just strewn throughout bathrooms. They were strewn out on the, on uh, in the ballroom. That was actually not the case. The FBI has staged those documents that way. And we only found out because they were down in the footnotes. And then Jack Smith actually admitted that the FBI had uh, staged the documents, <coughs> had manipulated the documents. And now we find out that the Department of Justice underneath Joe Biden had given the uh, FBI the ability to use deadly force in the raid upon Mar-a-Lago. And how do we know that? Let's look at this document right here. Here it is right here. Law enforcement officers of the Department of Justice may use deadly force when necessary. The agents plan to bring standard issue weapons, ammo, handcuffs, and medium and large size boat cutters, but they were instructed to wear unmarked polo or collared shirts and keep law enforcement equipment concealed. Why? You're doing a raid. Why would you conceal this information? So you're trying to provoke an encounter with the Secret Service. So you can use deadly force. That's how I'm that's how I'm reading this document. Because if you was doing this on the up and up, you'd call the Secret Service and say, hey, we've been given the authority to come in and do a raid upon Mar-a-Lago. And the Secret Service said, OK, let's see what your order states. And y'all have a conversation between you two. And then they open the doors and let you see whatever you need to see. But oh, no, not the Department of Justice. They say, hey, if. The former president of the United States gives in resistance. You have the ability and authority to use deadly force. They even had a trauma center set up as a triage for this incident. That's how bad it was. They had thought of everything. They were going to use St. Mary's Medical Center, level one trauma center, <clears throat> if anybody got hurt during the raid. And how did all this start? President Biden, when he came into office, he took away the president's right to executive privilege. Once that was lifted, the so-called the uh, library, that's basically what they are, the archivist, say, hey, there's some documents missing. I think President Trump stole them. So the Department of Justice decided, hey, they were cooperating, but we want them now. Let's go in and just take them. So there was a there was cooperation going on at first, but then the Department of Justice got greedy. They said, "Hey, they're not giving it to it like we want it. Let's go in and just take it right now." <clears throat> so they was given the authority to go in and do this raid, and given the authority to use deadly force. And don't and please don't say, "Well, Joe Biden didn't know. He was read in, so he could have plausible deniability if he chose to, if they they, they were ever questioned." Did you give the authorization for the Department of Justice to go in and raid Mar-a-Lago? Their answer would simply be, they are a separate but equal branch of government, and I'm not influenced in whatever decision they make. They are independent of me. And, of course, we all know that the Attorney General reports to the President. Let's not be stupid. And we know that the Attorney General told the President that, hey, we're going to raid Mar-a-Lago, and I gave them authority to use deadly force. And Joe Biden, either him or somebody that was running the government at the time, gave the nod to go ahead and do it. Let's not be stupid. Let's be real. There's no way in the world that they can go raid a former president's residence without the president of the United States knowing. There's no way that the FBI, which is underneath the Department of Justice, can go and raid Mar-a-Lago without Merrick Garland, the attorney general, knowing about it and him giving the sign-off authority to do it. <clears throat> Either he did it or somebody underneath him gave the authorization to do it 
as well as they had to brief <clears throat> Mayor Garland as to what they were going to do. So everybody was in the loop. That's basically how things work in the government. Everybody's in the loop. Then those who don't want to admit that this happened, they have plausible deniability. They're separate and equal uh, entity of the government. I'm not interfering with their investigation or, or we can't come in on an open investigation. That's their standard line. And that's how we got to where we are right now. <clears throat> All I can say is this government's corrupt. And with shenanigans going on like this, that's why we have the, the situation that we have going on in New York right now, where a non-disclosure agreement is turned into a felony. Unbelievable. But I'm a Trump supporter, 100%. Ride or die, I'm going to stay right where I'm at. But you're black. How can you be voting for Trump? You know he's a racist. That's the line the Democrats always run when they have no, nothing to run on. I thrived underneath the President Trump administration. I remember when gas was under $2 a gallon. I remember going to get milk and it was less than a, maybe a, like a dollar and 50 cent. Now it's $4 a gallon. I remember when gas was, like I said, gas was a dollar. dollar I mean, uh, gas was under $2. Now it's almost five bucks. So don't tell me that this administration has been for me. It's affected my pocket. So you can shout all the racist stuff that you want. You can call me a bootlicker. You can call me Uncle Tom. You can call me a sellout. All of that ain't going to affect me because ain't none of that affected the money that comes out of my pocket because of this administration. When this administration <clears throat> is not taking care of the black community and the Democrats in those black communities are not taking care of the black people and they still vote Democrat, then they deserve what they're getting. Chicago, they closing down schools, kicking the students out so they can put illegals there, yet they still going to vote Democrat. Not this one. I stand where I stand and I believe what I believe. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you can like this video, hit that like button. Please share this video. And thank you again for listening and watching the Retired Vet Show. God bless you all. Stay safe.